Usually people are really confused when I tell them what I do. I tell them like, yeah, I own a fingerboard company. Like those tech decks you used to get in sort of like, yeah, but professional. Skateboarding makes me feel awesome. It doesn't get boring. It's always a challenge. There's no rules. Fingerboarding and skateboarding both have that. I started fingerboarding in fourth grade. I had a lot of fun playing with the tech decks and then I wanted to kind of improve them. A lot of times the screws would come out so I'd glue them in and just start modifying things like that. And I just realized I could make them better and better. A lot of kids wanted to buy them so I kind of put a name on it and it grew into this huge business over time. There's hundreds of thousands of people out there that are into this. We are at the Flatface Rendezvous location in Dracut, Massachusetts, and it's pretty much a big building filled with fingerboard parks, and I do huge events here where kids fly in from all over the place to come and fingerboard together. When you go into a contest, it's crazy because there's stadium seating and there's everyone looking at you and lighting and cameras. My first few contests, I got crazy adrenaline rush. Like, you don't even remember the thing after you do your run. I don't do any warm-ups or exercises with my hands for fingerboarding. Apparently some people do calisthenics. The rules are pretty much you want to use two fingers. You'll have maybe 30 seconds or a minute or so and you just do a run and there will be a whole bunch of judges. They'll judge you on consistency, style, the tricks you do. It's like really high pressure. You can't even really put it into words. It's a crazy kind of feeling and atmosphere. When so many people get together from all over the world, all over the country, and some of them, it's like a really, really big deal to them. Like that's the only thing they wanted to do all year. It just makes me super happy because I can barely believe that I'm the reason they're there. Like because of something that I set up and that I'm doing. Skateboarding culture, you get a lot of people in general that are different. These are just kids that want a place and want to be in their own place and not doing what everybody else is doing. Chris Worley is the founder of A Skate, a nonprofit that teaches kids with autism how to skateboard. Autism has a lot of aspects to it. Most of the kids need occupational therapy of some form. The skateboarding is similar to other therapies. They're learning how to control their body in motion and it just stimulates parts of the brain that need to be stimulated in order to do things in life, in order to have conversations, in order to pay attention. I have a son who will soon be 14. His name is Sasha and he was diagnosed with autism at 22 months old. I bought him his first skateboard when he was right at five years old. His brother was three. It was really difficult for them to just come together and play. There was no play. Somehow the movement of the skateboard just made him focused and they would just skate. And I want to do that for other families. Chris started A-Skate eight years ago in a church parking lot in Birmingham, Alabama. It's since expanded across the U.S. and internationally. This year they were invited to participate in the Do Tour, a pro skating contest in California where kids were paired with professional skateboarders. I've known Sasha since I got involved with A-Skate about five years ago. The joy that I see that it brings to kids, like that's where I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. The skateboarding culture is 
accepting of everyone, you know, spectrum or not spectrum. No one cares what color, type, gender, whatever it is. Like, if you can skate, you can skate, and we got love for you. It's really incredible to see kids change through our program. I see families just see their child who is now capable of something, and they didn't know it. In a way, forming Ascape is like a love letter to Sasha, and he may never understand that or know it, but I do. Kind of like a skater has a skateboard or a BMXer has a bike. I just saw the wheelchair as something fun, so why not take it into the park? I'm Aaron Wheels Fotheringham, and I ride WCMX. WCMX stands for Wheelchair Motocross. It's, you know, taking your chair into the skate park and hitting ramps, kind of the same thing as BMX, but with a wheelchair. I first started going to the skate parks when I was eight years old, and I've been doing it for 16 years now. The wheelchair is definitely just an extension of my body because skaters aren't always on their skateboard and bikers aren't always on their bike, but I'm always on my chair. So that gives me like an unfair advantage to just practice everywhere I go. I feel like I'm lucky that I always have my wheelchair with me because I can just jump whenever I want. I was born with spina bifida. I've had 21 surgeries throughout my life and I spent a lot of time in the hospitals. And yeah, it would be easy to just be bummed out on that. But I was, for me, I just found the positive. The wheelchair has just always been fun and it's wheels stuck to your butt. How's that not a great time? In 2008, I got the Guinness World Record for the first backflip on a wheelchair. And I was at a local competition here in Vegas called Am Jam. That was a pretty cool day. One of my favorite tricks is just simple hand plant because I always loved watching skaters do it when I was growing up and you know watching the pros do it, it just was something I wanted to learn. I'm very blessed to be able to do what I love and what I'm passionate about for a living. A lot of the time the wheelchair comes with this stereotype of you can't do this or whatever because it's a medical device. I just always assume the wheelchair is a great opportunity. One, two. I feel like there's like a glass ceiling for women because I've hit it. If you skate and you rip, then you should just get what you deserve if like skateboarding is supposed to be for everybody. If we do actually want any form of equality or space, like we're gonna have to be the ones to create that space. <laughs> My name is Lacey Baker and I'm a professional skateboarder. I discovered skateboarding when I was really, really young, at like two years old. I was in foster care at that time and I would watch my foster brothers skate um, a mini ramp and I just was like immediately obsessed. Like I was like, I have to do this. I started competing when I was 11 years old. When I was 22, I skated the 2014 X Games in Austin and that's the year I won the gold. With women in skateboarding, there's like a subculture within a subculture. The skate industry like just doesn't care about women skating. It's not equal. For example, like there is a skateboard contest series which didn't used to include women in it, but it just started to. However, the prize for first place is 30 grand and like for the guys first place is 200 grand. I feel like it should be equal because we work just as hard as the guys. Meow Skateboards is a company that was created to like support women in skateboarding. I do my own board graphics, like I do a lot of the other girls' board graphics, and like it's rad because it's like skater owned and it's like for us and it's like by us, so it's like there's nothing corporate about it, and it feels like like that's how it's supposed to be. Even if nothing comes of like like having a skate career or like anything like that, like I still have skating, and like I believe in being yourself, and like. You know, just doing whatever the fuck you want. That's what skating is supposed to be.
when we started to go after Greg's dream of being a professional longboarder, life changed a lot. You're out with your father, you're just out there having fun, like nothing really beats that, like chasing after the same dream. And I think that's the best part about it for sure. This is Mike Paparowski, he's my father. He does downhill skateboarding along with Street Illusion. This is Greg Paparowski, he's from Golden, Colorado. He's a downhill skateboarder. Downhill longboarding is basically going down the hill as fast as you can. Street luge is very similar to longboarding, except you lay down. Greg still is the youngest to have competed at the Pikes Peak downhill race here in Colorado Springs. The fastest I've gone to date is 70 miles an hour, but that's, that's about it. <laughs> 2011 my ex and I were going through a divorce. Uh, it was a big adjustment for Greg. He was lashing out physically and having problems in school. I needed to try to motivate him, get him on the right track. I told him, if you get your stuff together in school, we can go after any dream you want to. I decided I wanted to pursue longboarding because it put me in the zone and made me forget about all the negative things that were happening in my life at the time. So I bought him a leather suit for Christmas that year and, and our first year on the scene, we traveled to Canada, New York, Washington, California. We were at the Ohio Gravity Games. We uh, rode the free bus to within five miles of the event and then we lugged all of our luggage down there. It started raining on us. We had a two-man tent, that's all we had. And as we were cuddled up in that tent with all our gear and everything, Gregory said to me, he goes, Dad, you never told me the dream was gonna be easy. And it, it was at that point I knew this kid's got it. He understands, like, he gets it. Just being able to be at the very lowest with my father and the very highest, we know that we can tough out anything together and that we can, we can make it. I've seen Greg grow a lot since we started skateboarding. A lot of people look at something and think, oh, I can't, can't do that. Greg looks at it and says, how am I gonna do that? <laughs>